Hey everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. How are you doing today? Let me make sure I have the chat up. I don't see the chat coming up. Let me just um, make sure that I'm in the right page. I wanna see who is here with me today. Good morning, everybody, um, or good evening, or good afternoon, depending where in the world you are. I am in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I am excited to be here with you yet again. Um, Awesome, we have a lot of familiar faces in the chat. We have Claudia from Print My Soul, Tunak, Baldir, uh, Andreas, Ralph, Sam, Ted. Thank you guys so much. We have Nathan from B Brazil. Steve in the chat as usual. Um, Beatrice says hi. Hi Beatrice, thank you guys so much for being here with me yet again for another very exciting daily creative challenge. So before we get started, let me just bring up the page that I need to show you guys, and actually that's not the right page. Let me make sure I'm in the right one right here. So what I need to do is go into behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop so that I can show you the main page for the stream. And this is the daily creative challenge page where there is a big blue button right in the center and you need to click on that so that you can get notified via the creative clouds for these daily creative challenges. And I also have the Discord app. Let me bring that up. Um, if you don't have Discord, you can make sure that you click under community chat to bring up Discord. And under Discord, you're gonna be able to chat with the community. Under the Photoshop tab, there is the current challenge section here. And what you need to do is submit the work that you've been creating with me. As you can see, yesterday we worked on the coin here a lot of coins a lot of money oh we have a cat awesome you guys know that i'm a big cat person so so cool that you guys did a cat um who was this i don't see their name let me enlarge the screen uh, is, oh lori wow lori really <laughs> went in there and did a whole bunch of coins they'll look fantastic lori excellent job so yeah thank you for submitting your work again make sure that you come into the discord page so that you can submit your work ask questions You'll see the Adobe Mentors, um, Sam, Tim, Valdir, Voodoo Val, Claudi from Print My Soul is there. This is some of the work that we worked on with the bling, quote unquote, text, the wrapper text that we created using diamonds and patterns. A lot of work with coins. I really, really like seeing that. The first challenge was this golden effect. Thank you guys so much for submitting the work. It's really, really cool. That's my face there. It's awesome, awesome work. Awesome. So yes, yeah, so make sure that you come into the community chat so that you can check Discord out. Also, on Behance, we also have the new behance.net slash galleries slash challenges page. And this is a curated gallery where, you can f or where we could feature your work. So make sure that when you create these challenges, you use the hashtag PSDailyChallenge. Challenge PS Daily Challenge when you're creating the project on Behance. If you don't know how to do that, check out the very first welcome stream for this um, set of daily creative challenges, and you'll be able to see how to create a project and add that hashtag to your project so that you have an opportunity to have your work featured on this gallery. Not just for Photoshop. If you're doing a daily creative challenge at Howard, make sure that you use the XD Daily Challenge hashtag and also the Illustrator hashtag AI Daily Challenge. So make sure that you check those out. And actually, no screen behind me. Oh my God, I just stopped all that time and there was no screen behind me. That's so awesome. So I'll quickly recap. So we have the daily creative challenge page, big blue button here in the center and community chat link is there and we can go into the Discord page, here it is, and you can make sure that you see the work that people are creating. So good job. The one that I was talking about, Lori, Lori made a whole bunch of coins. Um, I spent so much talking time about that and um, I didn't even show it on screen, but as you can see, there's a lot of, a lot of work right here. Lori, those are the coins I was talking about and the cat coins, cool. Anyway, sorry about not sharing my screen. I got so excited looking at all this awesome, awesome work. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thank you so much. So we have a very um, busy stream. We don't have a lot of time and we have a lot of cool things to do today. But I wanna show you that at the bottom of the page, you have this unlock the cha uh, uh, challenges 
boxes here and every day we unlocked a new challenge. I was, I was just mentioning yesterday we had the custom currency challenge and today we have a sports jersey, sports jersey challenge. So we are going to be um, just designing a sports jersey. Let me know in the chat, first of all, what your favorite sport is and what your favorite team is. For me, my favorite sport, I'm sure you guys know, is soccer. I grew up playing. I played competitively most of my life. I don't play competitively anymore, but that is my favorite sport. Now, the favorite team is going to be a, a, a question that I usually don't like answering because it makes me like look like a Fairweather fan. Like I like Barcelona, but I like them way before everybody liked them. I liked them since I was a kid. So like for those of you that follow soccer, I like Barcelona since before, the, you know, they became what they are now. So back in the Romario um, days, in the Maradona days, back in those days. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway. So let me know. Oh, soccer, San Jose Earthquakes, Stuart. I, you know what? I used to um, go to San Jose Earthquakes all the time. That's, they're not that far. The stadium's not that far from where I live. Um, awesome. New York Yankees. All right. Yeah. Soccer, Palmeiras. Okay, so the, you're Brazilian, I'm guessing. Barcelona, Ice Hockey, Richard, Everton, Bianca. Nice. Cool. So yeah, so make sure that you come into this box and click on get started so you can download the file that we're going to work with today and then open that open that up in Photoshop. So I'll give you a second to do that. Let me just quickly read the chat. We got more soccer fans, scuba divers. Awesome. I don't know if they were jerseys. I guess they were wetsuits. I don't know. Um, Ajax. Um, Rexham, uh, football, but tennis, downhill skiing. Nice. Romario, Barcelona, Madrid, Everton. West Brompton, um, Ajax, Ala Madrid, Super Deport Cali, Colombian, nice. Red Sox, cool, cool, cool. Oh, we got uh, my good friend Seth McCulloch in the chat. Yeah, he definitely has a lot of experience with sports jerseys. So now I'm nervous because he does like some high end work with Nike and stuff like that. So now you're putting the pressure on me, Seth. What are you doing here, man? Uh, Ooh, uh, Wilberton Hampton Wonders. Nice. They got one of my new favorite players, uh, Jimenez, on that team. Arsenal, rugby. Awesome. <laughs> You're not old enough, Jesus. You're... Matt, how old do you think I am? A lot of people, I don't know. I don't actually don't answer that because I don't feel bad if you say <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an older Asian than what I really am. But I am. I'm definitely older than I look. I'll tell you that much. Um, Anyway, so let's go into Photoshop. And this is the file that you should have downloaded. It's an Adobe stock image and it will have a watermark. You can uh, remove the watermark if you like, if you want to license it. If not, you can use a photo of your own t-shirt or anything you like. But this is the, the template that we're gonna start with and we're gonna um, create it so that we can, uh, we're gonna create layers on top of it so that we can work and place anything that we want in it. All right. Cool. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually I, I realized that when I saved this file and provided it to you guys, I realized that I made a mistake and I um, set the mode to grayscale for some reason. So when you first open the file, the mode will be grayscale. So make sure that you change the mode to RGB. So RGB color is selected. So sorry about that. So change it to RGB. First thing you have to do because I sent you a grayscale image, but no worries. You can easily change it to RGB and you'll be fine. Awesome. All right. So we get what, a 28. Oh God, I wish I was 28, 30. Oh, oh, bless you guys. Bless you. Yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, Liverpool for footy. Nice. Yeah. Liverpool's got a good team this year. Uh, Lewandowski from Bayern Munich. That's right. Um, anyway, so we have this um, layer here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate the layer by pressing Control J, Command J on the Mac so that we can have a copy to work with. Right on top of the original layer, I'm going to create a solid color fill layer and I'll just make it, you know, something neutral, 50% gray and press OK. So now we're just going to work from that layer up. And uh, the question is, do you need a subscription to remove the watermark? So um, Mark, what the 
Adobe stock images are, they're just assets that you can license or purchase. So you do have to either get a subscription or buy the image either or if you want to remove the watermark. Um, the reason that I can't give you the version without the watermark is because I don't have the license to provide them to everybody um, for free, but you can always work with the watermark version for practicing purposes and that's totally cool. You'll learn the techniques, the watermark might get in the way, but you'll learn the technique anyway. Cool, maybe forty. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. There you go, Nate. You're, you're right up there. <laughs> you're, you're much closer to my real age. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we're gonna use this copy. And what you know what? What I'll do to make it easy on you guys, I'll um, rename the layer to the blending mode. Blending mode that I'm setting it to. So this first blending mode, I'm gonna set it to a linear. Uh, burn so linear burn so change the blending mode to linear burn which is right up here and it will make things larger but when you do that uh darker excuse me not larger darker but when you do that notice that the whole image gets affected so what you want to do is before you do this you need to make a mask around the jersey so just to save some time i'm going to use the select subject feature let adobe sensei figure out the edges of my jersey but I want to use a vector mask for things like this. It's always much better to use a vector math mask. So again, for the sake of being fast, I'm just going to go into the path panel and click on this icon to convert that selection into a vector path. And then I can go and hold uh, Control and Windows Command on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to make that into a vector. Make it into a vector path. Now with the Curvature pen tool, I can come and click on these points that you'll see here and adjust it accordingly. I'm not going to spend too much time fine tuning the edges because I want to get right into the meat and potatoes of this uh, tutorial. But obviously, in your images, do spend the time and fine tune the mask as best as you can. You can double click on these points to turn them into um, corners instead of rounded edges. But anyway, that spend time on your image fine tuning these edges. And actually, you know what, what I'll do is I'll create a group and I'll just call this group um, Jersey. And I'm going to click and drag that mask onto that group so that I can place multiple layers inside of that group and have it and only have one mask controlling all the layers. That way, if I decide to make a change, I don't have to change three, four, five masks. I only have to change one. So by placing the mask in the group, you can save yourself some time. So this first um, image, I'll turn that into a linear burn blending mode. And what I'll do is also in that inside of that group, I'll apply a solid color adjustment layer and then we'll just make it, you know, blue and I'll place that in there. So there it is, blue. So I have a solid color fill layer set to blue inside of that group. On top of that, I have a linear burn layer and I'm going to press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac, and I'm going to add another layer. And this is going to be a highlight layer, and I'm going to set this one to screen, and I'll call that screen. And I'm typing the name of the blending mode on the mask so that you can see what it is. Um, cool. So now I can go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and then I can just make this darker. So I just really want the highlights to pop. See that? I'm just getting the highlights in there and adjust it like so. And I'll press OK. One thing that I didn't do that I, I just noticed is that I didn't make the layers black and white. So I can go back and go into Image, Adjustment, Black and White so that there's absolutely no color in there. And I'll do the same thing for the original one as well. There you go. Make sure that they're black and white. I'll duplicate this linear burn layer and I'll press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac, and I'm going to go to the top here and then I'm going to set this one to overlay and I'll type in overlay on here. Overlay, and this should get you a basically like a template that you can use. And I know that there's a lot of templates online, but you know, this is teaching you how to create them from scratch from any shirt that you may have. So you don't have to um, use a template. You can make your own. And usually when you make stuff from on your own, instead of using templates, you have more control and flexibility. But anyway, so this is going to be like our basic template here. And notice now that I can come in here and then change the color to whatever else I like. And everything is editable. So I can adjust the image any way that I want. So 
the jersey that I'm going to, uh, the, the design that I'm going to make is going to be a Photoshop jersey. So what I'm going to do is I have the Photoshop logo in here. You can use whatever logo that you want. Um, you can look for the Photoshop logo online if you like. I just happen to have that logo here and that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to place it above the color fill layer. So below the linear burn layer and watch what happens. See how now the Photoshop logo has the texture of the shirt on it. So that's because all these layers here, these three layers, overlay, screen, and linear burn are being applied on top of the logo. So now it looks like the logo is part of the jersey. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And I can have this layer selected and I can bring it up and I can scale it. So maybe place it here. What color do you guys think the, the jersey should be? Maybe like a lighter blue? Let's go for a lighter blue. So maybe something like this. And um, since, you know, we were talking about about um, soccer, maybe we can make it like a, like, I don't know, like a typical soccer jersey. So above the color fill layer, what I'll do is I'll just create a rectangular marquee tool and click and drag down from the center like so. And I'll fill that with maybe like a dark blue, like this dark blue inside of the Photoshop logo and maybe needs to be a little bit bluer. So maybe like right about here, press OK and I'll just fill that and I'll select the rectangular marquee tool and then just move to the side and fill it like so. And obviously I'm not being too precise in the spacing between the stripes, but maybe that's something that you might want to try. Now this looks like a, oh my God, like an inter jersey, doesn't it? I wasn't, that was not my intention, but it does like, like it does look like a inter the Milan jersey a little bit because of the colors and the stripes. But anyway, um, so what we can do now is apply a displacement map to the stripes so that they feel like they're actually part of the jersey. And the way that you would go about that is just by duplicating that original jersey, control, oops, I double clicked on it. I didn't mean to do that. Control J, Command J on the Mac, and I'm just gonna drag that all the way to the top. And um, you know what, actually, I'm gonna do this in a new document. It might work better in a new document. So I'm going to click on the, right click on the layer and duplicate it to convert it into um, a new document. So duplicate layer and new document, press OK. That way we just have one layer, layer and we don't have to worry about anything else. And there's a lot of fine detail here that I'm not really liking. So I'm just gonna go into um, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just gonna blur it so that I don't have a lot of that small detail. I don't want it to show up in my displacement map. And then I can go into file, save as, and I'm just gonna save it on my computer as a Photoshop document. I already have a displace map there that I was practicing with earlier, and I'm just gonna override that file and I'll just call it displace.psd, click on save. Uh, yes, I want to replace it, press OK, go back into my working document. And here what I'm going to do is um, disable this layer because I didn't actually need it. I opened it up in a new document and I'm going to go and find those stripes that I was working on right here, these stripes. And if you want to work non-destructively, you can right click and convert it into a smart object and go into filter, distort, displace. And I wish Photoshop had a preview here so you can better see what you're doing, but unfortunately that it doesn't. So Photoshop is gonna look at the highlights of that image and try to create peaks and valleys based on the values. Uh, darker pixels will push pixels down, higher, uh, brighter values will push them up basically. So you can experiment with these values. Um, I'll do something smaller just to be more subtle. Uh, maybe like 15 actually, let me try 15 and press okay. Select that displacement map you created and you can see how Photoshop distorts the image so that it looks like it's going around the creases in the jersey. Another thing that you can do is you can go into Filter, Liquify, and you can liquefy the stripes there by, let me first uh, go into View Options and then reduce the opacity a little bit. And then with the For Warp tool, I can click and drag and distort them so that they follow other contours that maybe that displacement map didn't get and it looks a little more realistic. And when you're done, you can press OK. And this is looking pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me see if there's any um, questions in the chat. Um, thank you, thank you, Ahmed, best challenge ever. Mia wrote, looks cool. Um, Every time uh, Seth wrote, every time I use a displacement map, I have to I have to go back and Google up how to do it. Yeah, 
Um, this is the best tip I've learned this week. Actually, it's I have a it's an older tutorial, but I have a tutorial on YouTube that basically talks about all about how the displacement map works. Let me see if I can find it really quick um, because I do want to uh, share it as a resource. Um, let me see. Sorry about that. I should have thought about this. Um, displacement map Photoshop. Hopefully it comes up fast in the search. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, I'm just gonna bring this over into this window here and we're getting this ad, but I have this video. It's a little old, it's from 2016, but it's called How to Use Displacement Filter in Photoshop Displacement Maps. So check it out. I go through the science behind how it all works and I probably need to watch it again because I probably forgot most of it. <laughs> but um, you know, I talk about all how I talk a lot about how the displacement map works in terms of the science behind it and what's really going on behind the scenes. So, if you really want to know how to that, how that filter works, check out this video: How to use the displace filter in Photoshop displacement maps. My YouTube channel, Photoshop Training Channel. But anyway, we don't have much time. But what you could do at this point is maybe change the color of the sleeves, and you could also create a new layer and just paint, right? You, you can just paint with any color that you like. So maybe if we wanted to make the sleeves like maybe black, for example, we can just paint, you know, on the sleeves. See that? And the highlights and texture are already applied from the layers above that we created earlier in the stream. See that? So we can just quickly, quickly start designing the shirt. And we could also do um, other cool things. For example, let me just um, just to show you, just to give you options. So I'll remove that. And another thing that you can do maybe is you can go into the curvature pen tool and change this to shape. And maybe you can create some cool shapes on your jersey like so. See that? Maybe do another one on this side. Obviously, I'm going fairly quickly here, but you, you get the idea. See that? And they're individual layers. So you can maybe change the color. Maybe one could be, I don't know, red. So just get creative with what you do on your jersey. Also, um, remember Photoshop has these uh, shapes, the custom shape tool. So I can come in here and select one of these custom shapes and just you know create something in here. So maybe like this sun shape. I can bring that in there, put it there. And it's actually a path. I actually wanted a shape. So let me try that again. There it is. And maybe, you know, I'll make it yellow or whatever color you want to make it. So you have a lot of options. So the design that I decided to go for was that enter the Milan looking soccer jersey, but you can do whatever you like in the chat, in the uh, challenge. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the chat now and I'm also looking at the time. Um, this went by so quickly. I wish I would have had another 30 minutes to show you more tips and tricks, but I'm really looking forward to see what you create using the tips um, that I showed you in this challenge. Also, let me quickly pull up the schedule. We have uh, we had in the morning Jason Levine doing uh, mixing sound for a short film. Then we have my daily creative challenge. Up next is photo retouching with week uh, weekend creative. Looking forward to that. Illustrator daily creative challenge. After that with Andrew as usual. We have branding and identity with Nina and Howard Pinsky doing the daily creative uh, the XD daily creative challenge at 2 p.m. and a draw along with Kyle T. Webster right after that at 2.30 and we'll end the day with a design off by Voodoo Val and Logan. So make sure that you stick around for those streams. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here with me today. It went by so quickly, but again, remember, go into Discord and make sure that you submit your work under current challenge and also use the hashtag PS Daily Challenge when you upload your work onto Behance. Thank you so much for watching. It was a pleasure being here as usual. It went by so fast. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning for another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye.